Well, the film you're about to see is our story of the journey um, of blood, and I think you'll find it very interesting because most people know what happens when a donor sticks their arm out and we very gratefully collect blood from them. Um, and probably most people have an idea that it gets administered to someone to uh, improve their life or quite often save their life. But not everybody gets the inside story about what happens in the middle. So we're going to tell you about how we manufacture blood and the processing, testing and issue side of it, which is equally important to ensuring that we have a very safe supply of blood to help the patients. <laughs> is to deliver a modern, world-class blood service that provides a sustainable and dependable supply of blood components that meet all safety, quality, compliance and service standards as efficiently as possible. There are three different ways to give blood. Static donor centres based at hospitals and locations across England and North Wales, regional mobile sessions designed to reach out to a wider community, and blood mobiles that travel all over the country, making it convenient for people at work or in rural areas to donate. I started giving blood because I thought it was just a very useful thing to be able to do and save a few lives. And then I changed over to doing platelet donation um, because I work with patients that have lots of chemotherapy and they need the platelets. I think what's inspired me mostly to become a blood donor was the fact that it's a really simple thing that I can do and give. It doesn't matter that I don't have much money or qualifications or things like that. As long as I'm fit and healthy, I can come give blood and to think that it's going to save someone's life is just amazing in my eyes. When a donor comes through the door to give their blood or platelets, they're given a form to fill out where they will be asked um, a few questions we take their haemoglobin sample. If it's a platelet donor that we're bleeding, they're generally on for 60 to 90 minutes. With the blood donation, the actual process only takes about 10 minutes. Once we've taken the donation, we pack the bags up and then a driver comes to pick up the donations. To put the appointment was very easy. I just went onto the website, I found the nearest um, place that was doing it on a time and date that was convenient for me and put in the appointment and I got an email back a few hours later. I usually make an appointment as I leave each session and normally they can accommodate the time and day that suits me. The donor carers and the nurses, all the staff in the department are really reassuring and helpful. They put me straight at ease, uh, they were very friendly, um, they explain everything that has to go on and what, what the process is, they ask a few questions um, and that's it, so I say it's, it's quite simple and it's very good. It's a good team um, and you just feel one big family really. Once a blood donation session has ended, our transport team collect the donations and deliver them to one of our blood manufacturing centres. Transport has a key part to play in ensuring that the blood supply chain is maintained through effective stock replenishment to donor collection teams and delivery to hospitals. Filton in the South West is the largest blood manufacturing facility in Europe which manufactures over 600,000 units of donated blood every year for patients in 90 hospitals across the Midlands and the South West. The majority of the blood that arrives in the pods behind me is uh, whole blood that's been filtered already on the overhead filtration device at the back of the hall. After it's been filtered, when it enters the cell, it's then entered into a batch so we can collect them together so that we can keep track of each donation. Once we've batched it, it then gets packaged, weighed, so it's in dynamic balance when we put it inside the centrifuge and then it's centrifuged quite hard. It's taken out and put onto one of the presses that we use. The press separates out the constituents of the blood, the plasma, from the red cells. After it's been separated, those packs are sealed and detached from each other. Those components are then weighed and then placed in crates and then they go around the outside of the hall to the other end where they're placed in correct storage. Either they're going to be put in the fridge if it's red cells 
If it's plasma and we've requested it, it'll be turned into fresh frozen plasma. At the same time that blood donations are being manufactured, the testing team is ensuring that blood components meet all the safety, quality, compliance and service standards. In testing we um, receive the samples into sample reception. When they're in sample reception they're then split down into three categories. That's virology which tests for uh, hepatitis B, hepatitis C and HIV. We've then got grouping which tests for your ABO group and your RH group and syphilis. And then there's your NAT testing which tests for the window period between uh, certain viruses like HIV and hepatitis B because they're not necessarily caught on the virology machines. Um, when all the testing has been completed and sorted, all the results are put into Pulse, which is our uh, main computer system. When all the results are in, um, they're then sent to manufacturing, and manufacturing can then uh, split down the samples into products, be it red cells, plasma, cryoprecipitate, or platelets. Once these tests have been carried out, hospital services validate each product and get them ready to transport to patients across the country. Once blood has been processed, it's uh, put into a cold room and at this point it's taken out and validated where the test results and the uh, processed unit are matched and the ABO group label is put onto the blood. It's then stored and it's ready for shipment to uh, the patient. The hospital liaison team manages the partnership between NHSBT and the hospitals to ensure the effective provision of safe and effective products and services. Hospital liaison is the interface between NHSBT and the hospitals. We also advise hospitals of the constraints that NHSBT have to work under. As well as manufacturing, testing and issuing, NHSBT is home to a number of other life-saving patient services, including RCI, H&I and SCI. RCI is a reference laboratory for all the local hospitals. What happens in the hospitals is, the vast majority of the time, if you need a blood transfusion, it will be sorted out by the local hospital. Every now and then there will be cases where somebody has made an antibody to either a transfusion or to a previous pregnancy, and in which case, again, most of the time the hospitals will sort that out. When they can't organise that, in the case of multiple antibodies or in case of autoimmune hemolytic anemias, they will send it to us. We will identify the antibodies and, if necessary, we will source units that are compatible with the patient and that will not cause a problem when they're transfused. Well, H&I stands for histocompatibility and immunogenetics and we cover a whole range of different tests. So we will match for bone marrow transplants, that's our main part of our work. Um, we supply uh, uh, tissue typed platelets for, for patients um, who uh, post, post their transplant. We look at patients and donors uh, post a bone marrow transplant and check the transplants worked. Um, we uh, provide tests for uh, mothers who um, have antibodies to uh, platelet antigens and therefore the babies could be affected. It's a bit like a, a platelet version of uh, uh, rhesus D.
the SCI department processes and cryopreserves a variety of stem cell collections, so bone marrow, peripheral blood stem cells and core blood. These can be used to transplant patients with a variety of blood disorders such as leukaemia, thalassemia um, and uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. We issue core blood around the world and also within the United Kingdom. As well as providing services which directly save and improve the lives of patients, a key part of our work is conducting and commissioning research into blood, stem cells, tissues and organ donation and transplantation. Uh, within R&D we've got about 150 scientists who are working at trying to translate academic research findings into new products and processes that we can offer patients from NHSBT. It gives people an opportunity to do some research. Uh, we have people coming in and doing projects for their master's degrees, doing PhDs, so it's an opportunity for scientists coming into the service to progress their careers in an academic environment. It means our products and services are constantly being improved with advances in technology. Underpinning all the work that we carry out with blood, organs, plasma and tissues are our group services, IT, estates and logistics, human resources, finance, clinical and communications. Together they are responsible for working with and supporting all areas of NHS BT. Once the blood has been tested and manufactured, it is ready to be transported to hospitals and the patients who need it. About eight and a half years ago, I was pregnant with my first child, Lauren, and I went into hospital and had to have a caesarean section to have her delivered. Um, following the caesarean, I had a massive hemorrhage. I was treated at the blood unit here at Southmead, but have made a full recovery thanks to blood donations. I think blood donors are absolutely fantastic. Um, it takes a really special person to give up some of their own time and their blood to save somebody else's life. Um, I think most people, if somebody said to them, this person you know needs your blood, they would go and donate. But these people aren't giving for someone they know, they're giving for complete strangers. And without those complete strangers, my whole family would be completely different. So I think they're really special people. And uh, I hope they will keep up the good work and that other people feel inspired to go and give blood. Um, because it's a great thing to be able to do for someone else. <laughs>